you would be shocked to discover all these world forums that myself and many others are part of and all these discussions it's incredible how little we talk about technology and this is of course one of the most important if not the most important aspect of water first of all desalinization which people discuss the prices in desalinization are clearly coming down and they're coming down dramatically to parts of the world where there's money like in the United States and maybe in Europe when municipalities look for alternative sources of water to the that means, do they want to build a dam? Do they want to have more conservation? Do they want to do other things? It was always that desalinization would be so expensive you couldn't do it because of the energy cost and other things. Now it's becoming competitive to places that have some money, and that's going to get even more competitive. So the technologies, and they're multiple, and desalinization are really an important key to this whole business. Point of use technologies. All sorts of people are coming up with innovations where point of view simply meaning that where I am at the, in a house or a, or a community, I have some tools at, at hand that I could purify and deal with water. Very, very important. And really, we should be thinking about how we liberate the great creativity we have and our technological um, prowess in this part of the world and other parts of the world to, to just liberate this on the problem. In sanitation, which we have not discussed, because all of the figures about water, which you may have heard, are very, very depressing, but the ones in sanitation are even more depressing. So, the methods and technologies to separate water from its sanitation, dry composting or other forms of technologies is very, very important to the future because sanitation is directly linked to health and this is one of the major, major things we need to be focusing on. So, I look to the, the sanitation area for huge breakthroughs. And I'm sure there's going to be uh, others we have lots of efficiency technologies. Now, the one thing about efficiency in technologies, yes, we can make irrigation more efficient. Yes, we can save lots of water through efficiency. But where are we optimizing, if I can use that word, of our efficiency? Is it at the house? Is it at a watershed? Is it at the river basin level? See, because the curious thing about efficiency is you can have lots of people optimizing efficiency of the use of water. But when you add them all together, they could destroy a river basin if nobody's figuring out how you optimize the use of the water at the basin level. Nevertheless, efficiency uh, is an enormous um, area for technological improvement. Israeli uh, ministers of defense saying, why would we fight a war on water when, for the price of one airplane, we could solve all of the waste treatment and water supply problems in the region? It doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. I think the real issue, in fact, I'm personally convinced that the real issue is that water is far more humanity's learning ground for building community than it is creating conflict. Now, there's violence around water. There's violence around water holes. People shoot each other to get water. I think the violence around water tends to be the lower you get, like between individuals, the, the greater you may have some violence or fighting around water. But when you get to the societal level, it's much less likely that societies, as societies, will fight over water. What's more likely is that they're fighting about other things, ethnic um, competitions or ethnic violence. They may want to use the water as a tool for achieving some of these other political ends. That is true. But our own history in terms of agreements in water is quite amazing. Is uh, Recently, in the last latter part of the 20th century, we, the table talks in, between the Israelis and, and others, even while they were fighting, they were talking about water. Today, uh, the multilateral peace talks on water, the story of the last 20 years has been one of building cooperation gradually and slowly. The Indus River Treaty, which has survived through various fighting, has now survived another challenge. And this is a very dangerous part of the world, India, Pakistan, and uncontrollable areas. That treaty survives, and they have actually cooperated to enrich the agreement further, just as we speak, in the last several months. And we could go on and on and on. Water has a tendency through history, through human history, to bring people together into community. Messy, yes difficult? Yes. But there's something about it. 
that uh, helps build communication, um, helps expand uh, people's uh, references, and I think the story is far more cooperative than it is of conflict. What about, you're asking me about hotspots and about that um, there are people who are highly vulnerable and who don't have much, and what, what does this all mean? I think that one has, first has to, ask, has to ask the question, why are they vulnerable? It could be because they live in an arid area and there's not a lot of water. It could be that they live in an area but they don't have the technology to capture and use the water. So. So one has to look at, well, how are they using and how do they want to use the water and what do they have available? We're back to our question about technology and growth. If you look at our country, for example, everybody wants to move to the arid parts of the country, and they're all complaining about water and the Colorado River running dry, but they want to continue the uses, and they're reticent to pay more and more money. The answer in our part of the world is that they're going to have to pay more and more money for the water in the delivery of the services if, in fact, they're going to live in an arid part of the world, and they're going to have to give up some uses, probably, irrigation for other uses. But in the poor parts of the world, if you have lots of people moving to arid areas where there's not water, and, you're, and that population is increasing, we are creating a time bomb. We do have to, in these cases, help with the investment in water infrastructure. At that point, investment in water infrastructure is really not an end in itself. It is an investment in security and stability, to be blunt. It, its importance and its understanding will increase. Water versus oil is the main critical um, geopolitical resource. Yes, it will become more and more important. Why do I say that? Well, first of all, with the price going up in oil, we are talking about all sorts of things and mitigation of climate change, which would reduce and affect our dependence on oil. There's a lot of dis debate and discussion about the use of oil and uh, uh, what it creates in terms of vulnerabilities. But notice what also is part of that discussion. We are discussing uh, what may happen, increased floods or damages. Society then will have to do what it's always done, adapt to these perturbations. The main defense of adaption is water management. So we want to do mitigation against uh, having to depend on oil, but uh, we, we see the climate variability. We're going to be focusing more and more on what we do in the immediate future to deal with this changes in water. Decision makers are not going to be able to let people just get flooded, not have access. They'll revolt. They'll destroy the systems. It's happened. It's happened throughout history. It's happened with pharaohs in the Nile. It's happened um, uh, in the history that we know. So in these senses, the investments that we make in water, which are generally public investments, I mean, the uh, resource itself doesn't follow the same financial patterns of investment. But the investments we make in water are going to become to, to be seen, once again, far more as investments in social stability and security and, than we've ever seen before. And they're going to be far more conscious. I, I actually think that the changes in the, what's happening in the oil sector are actually going to have this impact in raising our consciousness in terms of the water investments.